Chaim Weiss was born in 1971 in the state of New York in the United States. He was the eldest son of the couple Anton and Passy Weiss, who besides him had two more children, one aged 11 and the other aged 7. Of Jewish origin, Chaim's grandfather was a survivor of the camps, and his father Anton was born in Germany in a relocation settlement shortly after the end of World War II. Chaim grew up in Staten Island, a borough of New York with approximately 500,000 inhabitants. It is said that he was a quiet, intelligent, and very polite boy. At the time of the events, he was studying at Torah High School, a school that in addition to having the conventional education system, also focused on teaching the principles of Orthodox Judaism. Schools of this type are known to Jews as yeshivas. The school is located in the city of Long Beach, also in the state of New York, and the majority of students are Jewish. Haim had been studying there for just over two years, and like most students, he had his own dorm. Just to clarify, the school was like a conventional boarding school that had dormitories on campus where students sleep after completing their courses. I didn't find information if Haim returned home on weekends, which was one hour away by car from where he studied, because usually in schools like this, students spend the weekend at home with their family. A large proportion of students who study at Torah High School become rabbis after completing their studies. But Haim still wasn't sure whether he wanted to become a rabbi or follow in the footsteps of his father, who was a businessman. But unfortunately, Haim Weiss didn't have time to make that choice. On November 1, 1986, Haim's body was found in a dormitory by a counselor after he was late for Shabbat morning prayers. Immediately, the counselor ran out of the dorm and called the police. Halfway there, he found another student and told him to get out of there quickly. The police quickly arrived on the scene. Many students and staff were confused as they didn't know what was going on. Don Daly, one of the detectives in charge of the case, checked the body and the crime scene. According to him, Haim was hit twice in the head by an object that was probably a hatchet. He assumed this because the murder weapon was not located at the scene. The detective also noted that the room was all tidy, there were no signs of a break-in or a struggle, and nothing was taken. Although Haim's body was found on the bedroom floor, the detective claimed that he was attacking his bed while sleeping, as there was blood on the pillow and sheets, only after his body was placed on the ground. The criminal's motive for doing so was still unclear, but there are some theories that suggested that this was some kind of religious ritual. According to sources, in Orthodox Judaism there is a belief that when one departs, the body should be placed at his lowest and coolest point, and that is why Haim's was placed on the ground. Furthermore, the boy's bedroom window was open after the crime, and it was very cold that day. Orthodox traditions require that a door or a window be opened in a deceased person's room in order to allow the spirit to leave. For the detective on the case, this meant that whoever had committed the crime was familiar with the beliefs and customs of the Orthodox Judaism, as well as, of course, having a good knowledge of the school and the routine of students and staff. For some people, the open window only meant the criminal escape route. However, the victim's bedroom was on the third floor, so it was very unlikely that he had escaped through the window, since the height was considerable. The police had a very difficult time on the first day of investigation. That's because the day the crime took place, November 1, 1986, was a Saturday, and for the Jews, Saturday is considered holy. In the Jewish religion, Saturday, or Shabbat as they say, is the day of rest. For according to Hebrew tradition, God rested after completing the creation of the universe in six days. Okay, but what does this have to do with the police finding it difficult to investigate the case on the first day? Well, to summarize, as Saturday is a day of absolute rest for Orthodox Jews, they stopped doing several things in respect of rest, ranging from working to using electricity or driving a car. With that, They didn't want to answer questions from police officers who needed certain information to solve the case. Lido Heim Weiss was laid to rest at a funeral home in Brooklyn, New York. The ceremony was attended by more than a thousand people who were still not understanding what had happened. Heim was a quiet and studious young man, 
there is no reason for him to have been the victim of such a violent crime. The boy's parents were heartbroken. After all, the school where he studied was considered one of the safest and they never thought that something like this could happen to their son. According to people close to the family, Passy Vice, the victim's mother, was concerned about her son leaving away from home during high school. Hampton, the boy's father, even reported that a few months before the crime, more precisely in July 1986, Heim called him crying and saying he wanted to go home. Anton found this very strange, because according to him, his son was very happy and seemed to like the boarding school where he studied. The crime was reported across the country and due to the fear, some parents withdrew their children from boarding schools and placed them in mainstream schools closer to them. Returning to the investigations, the police still found it difficult to obtain information even after the Shabbat. The detectives got to talk to more than 100 students. However, all of them said they still didn't know anything, and those who were close to Haim's dorm and who logically could know something were very limited in their statements. The police later discovered that the students were instructed by the principal not to say anything about the case. Detectives then decided to call all students, staff, and anyone who was close to the crime scene when it occurred to pass the lie detector. And all of these people that were called passed the detector test. Either none of them really didn't know anything, or someone among them was a pretty good liar. The police were running out of options, as they didn't have much information to draw a line of investigation. Besides the fact that the murder weapon was nowhere to be found, and there was no trace of anyone else in Haim's dorm. A strange thing that happened a few days after the crime was that a candle was placed in the victim's room and no one from the school admitted to putting it there. This was not to happen since the boys' dormitory was closed and no one other than those involved in the investigation could enter the place. A memorial candle was already been placed there in the request of a rabbi, a candle that was supposed to burn for seven days. But that second candle to this day the authorities did not know who placed it. Time passed and the detectives had to work with what they were getting little by little. It was discovered that on the night the crime occurred, another student who was in the same building as Haim had his dorm door opened by someone he couldn't see, as if the person was looking for someone. The victim was the only student who didn't have a roommate. All the other students who numbered around 50 in that building were paired. Obviously, this made things easier for the criminal, because if there had been another student in the room, he would probably have screamed for help, drawing the attention of everyone in the building, and the person responsible for the crime would not have been able to leave the place without being noticed. It was also discovered that months before, two other crimes similar to Himes had occurred in the vicinity, whose victims were elderly people who lived alone. At the time, these crimes were not linked to what happened at the Jewish school, and I also didn't find information on whether the person responsible for them was arrested. Regarding the case of Heim Weiss, the police checked some suspects during the investigations. The first was the caretaker of the place. Some people said he had a strong temper and didn't get along with the victim, and soon after the crime, he ended up returning to Poland, his country of origin. The other was a homeless man who had mental problems. He became a suspect because he was always close to the area where the crime occurred and had already been arrested for trespassing on private property. There were other suspects as well, but these two I mentioned were considered the main ones by the police. However, all suspects were released due to lack of evidence linking them to the crime. The police continued to investigate and later, some revelations regarding the school's history emerged. About 10 years before the crime, a student filed a complaint saying he suffered physical abuse by a teacher. The student also said that he spoke with the person in charge of the school, hoping that he would take some action, but the person in charge protected the teacher and tried to settle the case. A few years before the crime, a student took his own life in one of the dormitories after being humiliated and assaulted by school officials. According to witnesses, he couldn't stand the terrible situation he was subjected to at the scene. This raised the theory that perhaps Haim Weiss had suffered some kind of abuse and the person responsible decided to kill him so that the boy wouldn't report him. Linked to this theory, 
Some strange events involving a rabbi and the school principal named Avram Cooper were reported by the victim's father, Anton Weiss. According to Anton, in August 1986, he sent Heim to visit his grandparents in Europe, and at that time, Avram Cooper called him asking when the boy would be back, and Anton replied that in a week or two. After a week, Avram Cooper called again, said he was still waiting and asked if the boy would come back next week. Realizing that Avram was anxious to speak with his son, Anton decided to take him to the rabbi's house as soon as he arrived from Europe. At the time, Avram asked Chaim to enter his house, but that it was for his parents to wait outside. The rabbi spoke for about 10 minutes with the boy, and he then returned to the family's car. Anton asked his son what Avram wanted so much from him, but Chaim didn't want to talk about it and Anton didn't pressure his son to talk. Months after the crime, Anton met with Avram in court after the Weiss family sued the school for carelessness and recklessness. In court, Rabbi Avram Cooper told Anton that he should reflect on any bad things he has done and consider that perhaps this is why bad luck had befallen his family. In short, the rabbi was blaming Anton for having done something bad and for that reason his son was killed. We cannot say that Avram Cooper was guilty of the crime or has any connection with it but we can say that at the very least his behavior is quite strange. Not to mention the fact that, according to sources, he was very unwilling to cooperate with the police, which hampered the investigation. 25 detectives worked on the case full-time for months. Even a mobile police command center was set up in front of the school for a week, in the hope that anyone with any information about the case would share it with the police. However, despite all these efforts, the investigation didn't move forward and the case was finally closed. In the time the case was archived, numerous theories about it emerged. One of them was that the victim's father owned money to a mafia that operated in Staten Island at the time. With that, this mafia would have hired a professional killer to send a message to the man using his son, which would explain the criminal's ability to enter the building where the drums were located, commit the crime, and then leave without a trace. Another theory is that the boy saw something he shouldn't have seen on school grounds, and someone, to protect that secret, silenced him forever. Another one is that Haim was killed out of envy. It is said that he was a brilliant boy, who stood out among all the others, and despite having many colleagues who liked him, it may be that others felt jealous to the point of committing the crime. These last two theories would also explain how the person responsible for the crime managed to get in and out of the building without anyone seeing them, since they would know the school's internal routine for being a student. Or going further, if the criminal was a student who had a dorm in the same building as the victim, they wouldn't even need to leave, they would just have to get back to their dorm. And that would raise the hypothesis that one or more students could be involved, as they slept in Paris with the exception of Heim Weiss. I couldn't find information if the police have spoken about these theories, but according to them, there is a higher probability that whoever committed the crime was either a student or a school employee. In May 2013, 26 years after the crime, the police decided to reopen the case. They held a press conference which was attended by Anton Weiss, the victim's father. At that press conference, a $25,000 reward was offered for any information that would help police solve the case. At that same press conference, authorities said that at the time of the crime, they found a hair on Heim's bed that didn't belong to him. This information was new. As in all the sources I checked, the police said that at the time they had found no evidence of another person at the crime scene. Maybe it was their strategy. The police said that this single strand of hair was in a safe and well-sealed place and that they would only use to test the DNA when someone really suspicious showed up, because according to them, the strand is a fragile sample and they are afraid of ended up disabling it, the only strong evidence they found. Some time after the press conference, the police received some calls from former students who attended Torah High School at the same time as the crime occurred. These students, most of whom are now over 50, shared some information that might help the police. However, this information was not enough for the investigations to move forward and the case to be solved. To this day, Rabbi Avram Cooper remains closed and doesn't like to say anything about the case. 
A new steam even went to him in the hope that he could say something, but he was very rude and then slammed the door of his house in the journalist's face. Again I say, we cannot claim that Avram Cooper is guilty of the crime or has any connection with it. But many believe that he has some connection or at least knows something about the crime. His insistent calls after the boys when he was in Europe, then his private conversation with him, which the boy didn't want to tell his father what it was about, and his attitude of not wanting to cooperate with the authorities, make him someone very suspicious. The theory most accepted by those who know the case is that poor Heim Weiss was being abused by someone who worked in the school administration. He would even have been put in a room by himself so that the person could go there and visit him, which would be impossible if he had a roommate like the other students. Remembering that months before the crime, the boy called his father crying and said he wanted to go home, something that Anthony himself, the victim's father, found strange because his son liked the school and was a happy boy, as I have already mentioned. If, in fact, Heim was being abused, he called his father hoping to be taken out of school and the person responsible for these abuses killed him, as he was afraid that the boy would tell his family everything. The building where Heim Weiss dorm was located was demolished after the repercussions of the case. The school he attended has remained in business as usual, as is still seen as one of the best schools in the Orthodox Jewish community. The case of Heim Weiss is considered a great mystery, and despite all the advances in forensic technology, it remains unsolved to this day. Well, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.